My name is Carlin and I'm going to show you how to live the off-grid dream. Maybe you want to live off-grid, but you don't even know what you don't know yet. You've heard people talking about off-grid or maybe homesteads. You might literally start with nothing on your property, just dirt, maybe some trees. The rest is up to you. Off-grid means different things to different people though. Being off-grid doesn't mean you don't have electricity, you just have to generate it yourself. Maybe a generator, solar panels, maybe even a wind generator. Off-grid simply means that you are not connected to utilities. No electricity, no water, no sewer, no cable TV, no internet, no fun. Hard to imagine, right? I'll break this down into two main sections, shelter and utilities. Camping is a simple way to live off-grid. A few years ago, I quit my job, sold my car, jumped on a motorcycle, and went camping. I started in Canada, went up to Alaska, and ended up living in Texas. In addition to camping gear, I had digital cameras, laptop, solar panel, and batteries that could charge from the motorcycle. It was a lot of fun, and I learned that I could power my gear from anywhere. Every time I paid an electric bill after that trip, I remembered life on the motorcycle. That had planted a seed in my heart. I wanted to disconnect from the grid. I now live on my own property, out in the desert near El Paso, Texas. For the first two years, I lived in a 20-year-old school bus, and this summer, 2019, I built my own home. And in the last two years, I have not had an electric bill, which is pretty awesome. The off-grid life isn't easy. In fact, every single part of it is harder than just living in an apartment but I think it's worth it. Shelter. Maybe the best place to start is with basic shelter. I'll give you a range of options to get you thinking, all right? If you've ever gone camping, you know what I mean. Having a tent and sleeping bag makes life a lot more comfortable. If you were truly homeless and had no money, a piece of plastic or a big cardboard box would give you some shelter. If you have a car, you can sleep in the car. It might not be comfortable, but you'd be pretty happy not to be sleeping in the cardboard box, right? Moving upscale to a van, a motorhome, or RV trailer. If you convert your own van, you can do it just how you want to. Or, if you buy a motorhome or trailer, they've done it all for you. That would give you some kind of power systems, water tanks, appliances, just like home, but smaller. You might take the RV and go exploring. For example, you always hear about the people who retire, sell their house, and buy an RV and hit the road. What a life! That would be wonderful! You could go from park to park exploring. There are places in the desert that are open for long-term camping. Once in a while, go dump your wastewater tanks, restock on supplies, and hit the road again. So you wouldn't need to have the land of your own. But you can't really set up permanently like that either. State parks and other campsites are always an option, too. Depending on the part of the country and even the season, you might be able to get long-term camping. But I've seen campsites that cost more than a motel, so that might not really save you any money. Okay, so to recap, up to here, your shelter could be a box or a tarp, your car or an RV. All of it is kind of temporary because you're always moving. But what if you wanted a home base, some place to park on your own property, a place to come back to between trips? This is where it really gets interesting. Land is everywhere. Some places are very expensive and others are amazingly inexpensive. For example, the land that I live on cost me about $500 an acre, but you had to buy 20 acre parcels. I live on an old cattle ranch. The land developer had it surveyed into approximately 20 acre parcels. How do you find land to buy? In my case, the land was available, zero money down, monthly payments, and you pay some interest. I actually found this one on eBay. Someone else was selling their land. Or you can Google land for sale. You might even see a sign on the freeway. Utility. Water is pretty important. Most of us can't live comfortably without electricity. What else do we need? Cell phones are pretty nice to have, too. I live about 15 miles from town and there is no water service out here. I drive to town every week or two with a water tank in my truck. I can haul 200 gallons at a time. 
That's enough water for doing laundry, taking showers, and drinking. I have a small water pump that sends the water from the tank to the shower or for doing laundry. I keep my drinking water in water jugs just like what you would use for camping. Rainwater. I have rain gutters running into trash cans, which is simple. I can pump that water into the washing machine directly for doing laundry or filter it and pump it into my main water tank for showers, etc. Last year I was able to catch enough rainwater for laundry and showers for two months. This year we haven't gotten as much rain. There is county power running on the edge of my property, so it is an option, but I have decided not to plug in. I have a generator for power, and then more recently I have been building up a solar power system with panels, charge controller, storage batteries, inverter, and then wiring to connect all my devices to. The wind blows pretty often here, so eventually I'd like to add a wind power generator to the system. On a typical day, I can run most of my electrical things from solar. I can charge laptops and cell phones. My deep freeze runs four hours a day, and I can make coffee on solar power. I can even run some power tools from solar. The question is how much of each. If it's cloudy, you don't get as much solar. You might not be able to make coffee, run the deep freeze, and run the table saw at the same time. Power today? Start the generator, and then do your big loads. I always try to take advantage of the generator, like if I'm doing laundry anyway, I might brew coffee, run the deep freeze, and charge all the power tool batteries, plus top off the main batteries. It's running anyway. Why not, right? Earlier, I said I haven't paid an electricity bill, which isn't quite true. I did pay for the power up front in the form of buying the generator and the solar panels and the batteries. In the first year, I probably paid as much for making my own power as I paid for electric bills in my old apartment. But by the second year, the average looked a lot better. I'll probably replace some of the batteries in the third year. Nothing is free, right? The cost of solar panels, batteries, inverter, charge controller is over $1,000 at the moment. The generator costs about $400. The last utility I'll mention, and for most people this should be the first, telephone, cell phone, internet, cable TV. There is no wired telephone service where I live. I get very sketchy cell phone coverage out here, but lately it has been working better. It kind of works, and that's about the best I can say. Usually what I do is when I go into El Paso for shopping, I'll plan on spending some time at the public library for internet. Other options are if I go out to eat at Denny's, I'll use the Wi-Fi that they have there. Also, the Walmart stores have amazingly good internet Wi-Fi in the stores. I think it's even faster than the library. So when I need to upload a video for my YouTube channel, I'll make sure it's on my phone. And then when I go for groceries, I'll start the upload when I walk into the store. And by the time I'm ready to leave with my groceries, I'll check to see if it's done. Satellite TV and satellite internet is also an option, but I don't watch TV much anymore. So, in conclusion, wow, you made it through the whole thing. Congratulations. Unplugging from the grid isn't for everyone, but it's not nearly as complicated as you might think it is. I have about two years of videos over on YouTube starting with when I first got the school bus out to the property. Comments and questions are always welcome, and as I say, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Alright, that's about it for this week. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Uh, if you're new to the channel, definitely subscribe. And uh, what else is there? Patreon and PayPal and all that other stuff. Check out the, uh, the link in the description. I've got a page on my website, gives you a lot more information about the ranch and everything I'm doing out here. So, again, thanks for now, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now. More info is on my website. You should totally check that out. Link is in the description. I do things <laughs> differently.